What's up guys, Chronica420 back here. Little update, we're gonna do a nutrient mixing video for you guys and show you how I actually mix my nutrients. I've got everything set out here, all my meters, my syringes, uh, my monitor. I've got actually some water there for clearing out my syringes so we don't get any cross contamination. And basically, as you can see here, we got several products. I left that one out. Um, we got Silicate Procal, GPF, which is Fulvic, Root Builder, uh, Vita Thrive, our two bases, Hydro Fuel A and B, and then we got some little protector preventatives here. Hydro Guard, which will prevent my uh, reservoir from going bad as it creates beneficial bacteria that eats bad bacteria. It's also a root inoculant. Then we've got Z9, which is a pH stabilizer. Also, it has enzymes in it that will also kill bad bacteria and eats up any gunk in your reservoir. So it stops any clogging. And then, of course, the pH up and down and all our meters here. We've got the Blue Lab monitor, combo monitor there, or sorry, Guardian monitor. Then we've got the Blue Lab pH meter, and then we just got a little cheap uh, TDS pen for starting, and our RO water. Now, basically what happens here, guys, is uh, with the RO water, I, you, you notice how I don't have this monitor in it right away. When you start with RO water, do not put your pH meter in it. You can ruin your pH meter. What happens here is, um, normally with water, for it to measure the pH, there has to be ions in the water. With RO water, there's zero ions in it. Your pH pen inside that little globe that measures has ions in it. When you put that pH meter inside the water, that's RO, what happens is those ions escape the globe into the water and attempt to create an equilibrium so it can read the pH. Then draining it of its actual ions that actually balance it and buffer the actual meter. It can set your meter to go right off and it can actually really mess up the programming in it. I've actually had it shoot shot like a whole pen where the pen just would not go back no matter how long you sat it in solution or anything so be very careful if your pens and stuff monitors are very expensive then take care with them our first step here what we're going to do as we got some silicate from here usually i like to use plant guard from green planet but the store that i go to didn't have it so i had to settle with this silicate um the silicate i'm going to be adding it first uh you got to notice that one thing about silicate and procal they do not like to work together um if they're put in too close together and at the wrong time and too fast and stuff like that, it can cause some bad precipitation and your nutrients to lock and bind out. So first off, what we're going to do is add our silicate. I got about 15 um, milliliters here. The silicate says anywhere from 2.5 to 5 milliliters per gallon. We got 5 gallons, so we're going somewhere in between that. We're going to mix that in here nice and slowly, as you can see. And then basically what I want to do is I'm going to leave that for about 15 minutes. Silica, you are silicate. You want that to mix in the water for quite some time. You want it to dilute great and nice and awesome or else you could have some precipitation problems as it likes to precipitate really badly. So we're going to wait for this to mix down and we'll come back with the other part of the video and mixing the rest of the nutrients, guys. What's up, guys? Chronica420. We're back here. Um, the second part, we're basically going to do this all in parts, so it's going to cut in and cut out, uh, but I'll edit it nice for you guys. Uh, as you can see, we've got the meter running now, the monitor, as we've basically got some PPM in there. Uh, you can see the pH on the bottom is really high, 9.5. That's due to the fact that we did put silica in, and silica really jacks the pH up. If you ever do need a pH up that's non-acidic like the normal pH up, you can use that. But I do advise to dilute it in a cup of water, then put it into whatever mix you have. As I said before, it can precipitate very easily. Um, next up, we're going to be adding Hydro Fuel A. And basically, I'm going to be adding the amount of 1.5 milliliters per liter. Uh, we've got basically 18.9 liters in here. So I got it around, I think it was 28.5 or something like that, milliliters. Um, we'll be adding this first. It will give it a little time, about two minutes. You don't have to wait that long with this. I do have two mixing pumps going in here, as you can see, really mixing things up. It's just the silica that I'm more concerned about, giving it time to mix in. So we'll enter this nice and slowly. I like to mix it around when I'm entering it into my uh, nutrient mix here. And basically, that's that, and we'll be back in a couple minutes with uh, the Hydro Fuel B that we're going to be putting in. What's up, guys? So now we're going to add hydro fuel part B um, as you can see we've already gone up to 440 ppm now I think we were about at 60 before so it drove us up a good 300 something um, pH has gone down about 9.2 so it is going down with this now we're going to be adding the B part of the hydro fuel A and B um, this one adds a little less ppm uh, as I said I'm only adding 1.5 milliliters per liter to this uh, mix 
they do recommend uh, two milliliters to three milliliters per liter, but I am in auto pots, so with auto pots you use a lot less. Um, you don't use the full maximum strength, or else uh, you'll get into some problems, as it tends to just bunch up inside the soil and just stay there and just compiles more and more and more and more. So now we're gonna add this slowly, as it's been some time since the hydro fuel A. This is hydro fuel B. We're gonna let that sit for another couple of minutes and be back in a second. Next up, we have Vita Thrive. I'm only gonna be adding about one mil per liter of this. I'll probably up this a little more as we get on with the plant growth. This is just a basic uh, little solution of uh, vitamins and minerals that helps the plant with stressors and stuff like that. So we're gonna add that next. As you can see, also we've gone up to 610 PPM. We're on the times 500 scale. That's what uh, Green Planet likes to use for their nutrients. Also, we've gone down to 7.1 PPM or uh, pH, as you can see, and our temperature is at 66, which will hopefully get up to 68 once we put our water chiller on there and keep it nice and good. But other than that, let's get to this. Let's get adding the Vita Thrive. Also, I might have mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but we have Procal in this too, and we're using the silica. Normally, if you didn't use silica, you would add Procal first, and then you would add your bases. Um, the Procal is basically like the buffer, but when using silica, you wanna add silica first, and then you wanna space it out with the Procal. So add your bases first, and then add the Vita Thrive, and then add your Procal, because you don't wanna add them to too close together because what happens is it can precipitate, it causes problems, they don't like to work too well together. So when mixing them you gotta kinda stretch it out to a different part. Um, but normally if you're not using silica, go with the Procal or CalMag first as your first addition to the water just to give it those first uh, actual buffer and everything and then add your actual base nutrients here. Um, another good thing about these base nutrients, they do have a little bit of calcium magnesium in it. so. It is really getting in there first anyways. But other than that, let's get to the Vita Thrive. One mil per liter we're gonna add here, and then we're gonna let this sit again. And as you can see, it gives a very nice yellow tinge to the water. They put some yellow dye in it. Um, as I said, I've been using this cup here, which I cleared my syringe out, and I just rinse it out nice and good because I don't like to cross-contaminate. I had problems with that before where, you know, I got some cross-contamination and then the bottle just really went bad and caused me problems. But back in a second with the second or next part of the video okay guys we're back here again now we're gonna add in our pro cal or as everybody would know it as cal mag calcium magnesium um, with this they recommend 1.2 milliliters per gallon but as I said we're in auto pots less is more and that saying could not be better with cannabis less is more with uh, nutrients so we're only gonna add 0.5 mils <clears throat> per liter so we've basically got nine mils in here a little more than 9, 9.5 is this is 18.9 liters that makes five gallons. Um, we're at 630 ppm right now on the 500 scale, 7.1 ppm as you can see. Temperature's raising a little bit, but we'll keep that locked in once we put the water chiller and drop this all into my reservoir. So let's just mix this in and we'll wait a little bit again and we'll come back. Okay, so next up we have GPF. This is basically GPF uptake. It helps in uh, uptaking nutrients to your plant. They also have uh, GPH with this humic. This one is fulvic. Um, basically, the differences between the two is GPF has a lower molecular weight than uh, humic, so it won't actually like gunk up in water and stuff like that. If you put humic in a glass of water and let it sit for a day, it will drop to the bottom and just gunk up in a little pile. Where GPF will stay diluted, it's better for hydroponic systems, reservoir systems, or auto pots like I'm using. <clears throat> Another thing about this, <clears throat> sorry guys, GPF is actually a chelator, okay? Now, I don't know if a lot of you know what the chelation pro process is, but there's a lot of nutrients that you put into your solution. A lot of them are readily available, a lot of them are needed in high amounts, but there's certain nutrients that are only needed in small amounts, which are called micronutrients. A lot of these nutrients are actually not readily available to your plant if you just put it in water and feed it. Um, what happens here is basically your plant is negatively charged. Um, these nutrients are positively charged. For your plant to accept those nutrients, they also need to be negatively charged. So what a chelator does is it attaches on to those nutrients as uh, atom or whatever molecule in a claw-like fashion at numerous points and basically it encapsulates it 
and puts it to either a neutral or negative charge, now making it available to your plants. This is stuff like iron, um, this other like iron stuff like that, you know, metals and stuff like that that you would see. Basically, your micronutrients. So a lot of people actually don't know this that those nutrients aren't readily available unless you use uh, some kind of chelation process. So by using this, this not only aids in the uptake of other nutrients but it also aids in helping the uptake of nutrients that are not normally readily available, like micronutrients. So we're gonna add this. They recommend uh, five mils per liter, but I only use two due to the fact, as I said, I'm in auto pots and less is more. Um, this stuff has a really brown color to it, but it's not actually thick. As I said, it has a lower molecular weight than actual humic. Humic is a chelator too that you can use. You'd wanna use that more for just soil plants that you would just actually feed from the top. Um, this stuff you want to use in your reservoirs as it won't gunk, gunk up in your lines But other than that we'll be back in a second with the next mixing process So we're back with the next part of this mixing video here We've got root builder which is last on the list of the green planet stuff And then we're going to get into the hydro guard and the z9 Basically the root and auclids and stuff like that I find this stuff really gets the roots built up nice and good um, it's got some enzymes and stuff in it. Uh, I've done some side to sides and I found when I didn't use it, I, the root system really lacked. When I do use it, the roots just explode. Um, so it's some really good stuff. If you're using this for like soil and you're just feeding from the top of your pot, do this every two weeks. Don't do this every feeding. If you're doing it in a reservoir, then every reservoir change. Um, it's not really recommended to do in a hydroponic system reservoirs as it can go bad easily, but due to the fact that we're using HydroGuard and Z9, we won't be having that problem and it will actually flourish quite well. They do recommend for this one also five milliliters per liter, but we're only gonna use two. As I said, we're in auto pots, less is more. So mix that in nice and we'll give that time and come back with the final stages of this. So we're gonna jump to pH down now. Um, we don't need any pH up, so we'll minus that out of the video. That's not gonna be shot in this video. Um, but we're gonna do pH down. As you see, we're at 6.7. Now I'm gonna to try to get down to around 6.3, 6.4. That's my sweet spot with the auto pots, I find. Um, with this stuff, you only need a couple drops. Well, actually, you need a little more than a couple drops. Once your PPM gets up, then you need a lot more. If you have a lower PPM, then you just need like a small amount, like a little drop will set it right up or down. Um, but with more nutrient solution in there, you might need a little more. Also, you want to put this in nice and slowly. Um, sometimes you can cause things to precipitate. Like if you see things start fogging up when you're putting things in, that's precipitation. And then after that, you'll see things starting getting chunky in the water. That's, you know, full on precipitation. So I'm just going in with a couple drops. I slowly like to drop it in. It is an acid. I don't want to just throw it in blind eye. And basically, yeah. So we'll come back once we got that on level and uh, we'll let it sit for a while once it gets down to its PPM rating and we'll do the last of it, the HydroGuard and the Z9. Usually they say do your HydroGuard after you pH down or up, but I find HydroGuard does not set your pH off in any way, it doesn't change the pH. So I like to put the actual pH down, the acidic stuff in first so it doesn't harm any of that beneficial bacteria. So we've allowed our pH to adjust and sit for a while and it's leveled out at 6.3, uh, my beautiful sweet spot. The blue lab meters are only uh, one point meters. I've had uh, two point meters where I was able to get it like 6.35, a little more sweeter, but I like this meter a lot more because it just stays on point more regularly. I don't have to calibrate it as much. Also another thing I want to talk about is I'm on the actual TDS scale. The TDS is measured in PPM too. Um, to get either PPM or TDS, you have to have EC. They're both conversions of it. They're both basically PPM. Um, TDS is times 500. PPM there is times 700. Basically, it's the difference of if you're in Europe or the US or Canada, um, Europe tends to use the 700 scale, where Canada uses the 500 scale. Um, basically, what these are are this. Um, times 700, I think, is what's called your 442 conversion, which some will say is closest to a hydroponic solution. Um, there's a big argument between this. And then your 500 scale is your NACI conversion. And then others say that's the closest to a hydroponic solution. So with Green Planet, they tend to use the times 500 scale. It says right on their actual feeding programs. So we've set it to the TDS times 500. 
and basically keeping it at like that. I'm going to do a video later about how to use EC correctly because EC is the most correct way to actually mix your, mix your solution. It will give you the most like um, the best the best correct value. Um, it gets a little iffy with PPM and stuff like that, but PPM tends to be easier for some people that are newer and stuff like that. So next up, we've got into here our Hydro Guard. This is basically uh, some bacillus, a type of bacillus that creates beneficial bacteria that eats bad bacteria and stops your reservoir from going bad and stinky. Um, sometimes I have that problem in the summer. I did just get a water cooler, so I really shouldn't have that problem. I could probably get away without using this, but I like using it because it is uh, root inoculate and it does prevent root rot from happening. So it's a good preventative for them. These are in auto pots. So they tend to sit in a tray of water that can cause some root rot. So next up, we're going to add this. As I said, this is usually they say to add it after or before you pH'd. But um, I added pH first because I found this stuff doesn't really touch my uh, actual pH value. And if it does, I'll just add a little bit of diluted silica to bring it up. So we're going to add this nice and slowly. And then we'll come back after that dilutes and do the final product, which is Z9. What's up guys, so we're getting to the last part here. This is Z9, basically a pH stabilizer, and I like degunker, it just keeps things nice and clean. Um, no gunk, no clogs. Uh, since I started using this stuff, oh man, stuff has been going great. It also tends to cure root rot right on spot. Um, such amazing stuff, so if you have a bad root rot problem, this stuff will cure it uh, way better than hydrogen peroxide and stuff like that. So it's quite, quite, quite awesome little stuff. It's from a company called Flying Monkeys or something like that. They recommend about 2.5 mils per liter. I tend to use a little more of this one. I tend to use three. So I use my little dropper here and I just mix her in nice. A couple drops of it or a couple of mils because this dropper does a one mil exact every time. So I like to mix in that nice three mils. And we'll come back in a minute once that's diluted and do the final part. And yeah, that's it, guys. Okay, so now we're on to the second part of Z9. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the enzyme part of it. It's got a little froth in there, as you can see. But I'll do my three mils of this, and that will be the final end of my mixing my solution, which will then get poured into my reservoir and just basically activate it in the reservoir and start feeding my plants. So that's about it guys, that's my uh, little mixing tutorial video. As I said, take your time, do not mix things too fast, always make sure you dilute everything, don't just shoot a bunch of nutrients in together because they can bind up, make sure they're pre-mixed first, so give some time between them and you won't have any problems. Uh, if you tend to shoot things in there very fast or if you cross contaminate, stuff like that, you, you're gonna bind things up, you're gonna precipitate, your water, water will get really foggy and stuff will just start falling out of the water. That's precipitation. Your nutrients will fall right out of the water literally and clump up inside. But other than that guys, it's looking good. We're at about 780 ppm. Uh, 68 temperature, that's the exact temperature I want to be at, and 6.3 pH, so this is quite the beauty mix. Um, usually I would like it around maybe 6, 650 or something like that. I might bring it down with some RO water, but I might not. I might just leave it at this. If you're in soil, you would be at a higher PPM ratio um, than this is, but I'm in auto pot, so you tend to keep it lower as they need less, less is more. Other than that, if you have any questions, guys, just hit me up in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as possible. That's it for this. Chronicle 420, I'm out.